Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to be installing some brand new uh, upgraded Bilstein DCC compatible B6 uh, struts as well as some 034 Motorsport camber mounts on my 2016 Mark 7 Golf R. Uh, just for a heads up, I am going to be using the re knuckle removal method on this car because I've got some other work to do at the same time. Um, there are other videos out there with people using what they call the 2x4 method. Um, it's a different method. Uh, as I said, this one's going to require removing the knuckle. It's going to require a few more extra bolts that you're going to have to replace, but uh, overall I think it's going to be easier. Plus, if you're doing any other work on any other suspension parts, ball joints or lower control arms or anything like that, um, you might as well just go ahead and remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the wheels off, vehicle up in the air, and we'll go ahead and get started. One important thing to note, if you are going to be doing the knuckle removal method, you are going to have to remove your axle, uh, the axle bolt on these cars. Um, if you're doing that, ideally, uh, unless you have a large impact wrench uh, or there's a couple other methods that you can get to it, uh, you will need to remove, as I said, this axle nut that's in here. It is a 24 millimeter 12 point a 15 16 12 point also works as said this is torqued to 200 newton meters plus 180 degrees from the factory so it's extremely high torque your best bet to get this loose is actually to do it before you lift the car off the ground have the car in park in gear uh, and you're probably going to need either an impact wrench or a breaker bar with a very long pipe on it to get this loose uh, the same will go for tightening it later but just wanted to give you a heads up before we get started one important thing to note, uh, earlier I mentioned you could use the weight of the vehicle with vehicle and park and everything to loosen this bolt because it is such a high torque bolt. Um, one quick note, in the factory service manual it says that if there is weight on this bearing you should not loosen this bolt by more than 90 degrees. So if you are going to use this method and not use any impact or something else with suspension unloaded, turn the bolt, mark it, turn it 90 degrees lift the vehicle get the weight off the bearing and then loosen it the rest of the way uh, they say you do risk damaging the the bearing if you uh put the full weight of the vehicle on it without that bolt in place so just a word of warning and as i mentioned before i've already loosened this uh axle nut the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to work on taking the caliper and rotor off the car uh, since i'm going to be pulling all this out uh, it's just going to make everything lighter and a lot easier to work with, and it's just less stuff I have to, have to be concerned with. So I'm going to start off by removing this T30 screw that holds the, the rotor on. If you need something to help hold the rotor as you back this out, you can shove, shove a screwdriver into your brake slots, uh, and that'll help. Be very careful with this. These can break, especially if you've never taken one off before. I have the rotor retaining screw loose now. Next up, I'm going to be removing the caliper. If you're not doing anything with your brakes, you could theoretically get away with just removing uh, the carrier bolts and taking the whole carrier and caliper assembly off as one piece. I'm going to be swapping over to track pads, so I'm going to be removing the caliper from the carrier and the carrier from the knuckle. Um, to do this, this is a 13 millimeter, sometimes a 14 millimeter bolt, and then I've got a 17 millimeter hex here that you have to hold. You do need a pretty thin wrench here. Actually, a uh, bicycle pedal wrench actually works really well for holding these thin uh, thin nuts and then to do the carrier bolts themselves these are 21 millimeter these are very high torque so you're probably going to need a breaker bar uh, it is very difficult to get in here with a impact wrench unless you turn the wheels so i'm going to go ahead and pull these off and we'll come right back i'm ready to remove the caliper but before i do that uh, two things i do want to go ahead and do there's this bracket here which is holding both the brake line as well as some ABS sensors and some other sensors. Um, this is a 10 millimeter screw. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. That'll allow me to peel the whole caliper and brake line all the way over the top. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead now and disconnect the uh, sensor for the DCC. And a little push tab here, push in and wiggle and it should come loose. So as I said, now once I remove this bracket, this whole thing will kind of stay stuck to the brake rotor, or caliper rather. I'll be able to kind of peel it up and over and hang it up out of the way. Got the rotor off, I've got the caliper and the carrier off at this point. 
Uh, I have removed my fender liner because of some other things I'm doing, which gave me a convenient place to hang the caliper. Once again, if you're doing this, just make sure you've got the caliper supported some way so that you're not putting a lot of strain on your brake lines. So because I removed that bracket, it's kind of up and out of the way. The one last thing that I really need to do as far as this particular area goes, I've got my ABS sensor right here and that there is a tab right here that I'm gonna have to pull. You're probably gonna need some kind of a pick tool. Um, I guess you could remove the ABS sensor, but it's easier to just unplug it. So I'm gonna go ahead, said hook, hook a hook under here. Uh, and it's gonna take two hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting that unplugged. The next thing we're gonna remove, uh, and it's more just to protect it. Um, right here, you can see, uh, this is actually the level sensor. This is for the headlights and for the DCC. There is a single 10 millimeter nut on the bottom side. So I'm gonna remove this nut just so I can pull this bracket and connecting arm up out of the way just so that I do not damage these sensor. The, these sensors are $275, so you don't, really don't wanna mess them up. So I'm gonna remove this, get this free and clear out of the way, and then we'll move on. Next up, we're gonna remove the upper sway bar link. Uh, so that's right here. This is a six millimeter uh, triple square hold and an 18 millimeter fastener. So I'm gonna go ahead, get what I need to hold the bolt, or I guess hold the stud and loosen the bolt and we'll go ahead and get it loose and move on. Okay, I've had a slight change in plan. Unfortunately, the triple square has stripped out of the end of the sway bar link and I was unable to disconnect the nut. Um, as a result, I have removed the sway bar end of the sway bar end link. Uh, I'm now gonna have to purchase a new sway bar end link, but uh, that's part of dealing with a car that lives in the rust belt. The next step is going to be remove the, loosen the tie rod end. It is a 21 millimeter hex. Uh, hopefully I can get this loose with just an impact wrench, and then we'll work on trying to get the sway bar itself, or the tie rod end itself loose. Fortunately, the nut came loose without having to use the holding feature on with the impact wrench. Um, to get the tie rod end itself loose, there's a couple of different ways that people will do this. Theoretically, you can, this is a taper fit, so theoretically you can hit out here with a hammer and that will shock it loose. Uh, another option is, is you can actually thread the nut down so that you're below uh, the bottom of the stud and you can hit this with a hammer uh, upwards and that will often jar it loose. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use an air hammer with an actual hammer bit. And I'm actually going to drive on the socket so that I'm driving on the flange so I don't risk damaging any of the threads. Real quick and simple, tie rod's loose, no damage to the nut. Um, right now I'm going to snug it up just for a second. Um, the next step is gonna be to remove the three lower ball joint nuts. These I believe are 14 millimeter. Um, so I'm gonna grab my impact socket and drive these off uh, and then we'll come right back. So at this point I have almost everything released from underneath. So now I actually need to start worrying about the three bolts holding the um, the top of the strut in. Uh, to get to them, I gotta remove part of the cowl here, at least loosen part of the cowl. Uh, first of all, I pulled this rubber stripping back, the weather stripping back. There's a plastic or a metal clip right here. You're gonna need some kind of a hook tool. Gently pull it out. Be careful not to drop it and lose it. Set it someplace safe. You've got a piece of foam over here on the edge that you're gonna have to kind of work Past. And now, unless you want to remove your wiper and a bunch of other stuff, unfortunately this is as high as you can get. Um, the easy thing to do would be to try and remove the wiper, but sometimes that can be a real challenge. Theoretically, if you're careful, you can access these bolts from here. I'm going to plan on go ahead and removing my wipers just to make this a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to get to work on that and then I'll be right back. So to remove your wiper, there's a plastic cap that covers the nut. There's a little indentation over here on the side. I used a pry tool, pulled that off. Just watch the paint on it and everything else. This looks to be a 13 millimeter, which it is. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this. You will want an extension on here in order to reach it. I probably would not recommend going at this with an impact wrench if you can avoid it just because um, it shouldn't be very tight and it's not. Uh, so I've loosened this. Now the question is going to be how hard is it to actually get the wiper loose. Sometimes these things come right apart. Sometimes they don't. One thing that I find that's helpful, make sure that you're actually pulling up on the wiper and you don't have the wiper camming on it. Sometimes just wiggling back and forth on this. Be gentle. But yeah, I was able to get mine loose. Um, Sometimes it is helpful to either mark the, the arm or mark the windshield. My windshield's dirty, so I'll be able to tell where the wiper was. Um, but you will have to make sure that you can try and get the wiper back on in the right place later. But I'm going to set the wiper arm out of the way. And now that gives me significantly better access. Um, if you really wanted to go at it, you could also remove the, the, the far arm. This one, I think I'm actually going to have enough room in order to be able to get in here to, to get to all these fasteners without risking damaging the plastic. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, get a 13 millimeter socket and start loosening the top three, uh, top three nuts. At this point I have two of the three bolts all the way out. The third bolt is right here. It's almost all the way out. It was starting to drop the strut through the bottom. So I've come underneath and I've got a jack supporting it just so that I can easily remove that bolt and not have everything drop out. One important thing to note, so we've loosened this bolt here. Um, depending on corrosion and everything else, um, you may have to take this and whack it a couple times with a hammer to get your CV loose um, after you've loosened it some. Fortunately, mine mine's already loose i'm able to just kind of push it in so once i remove this bolt i'll be able to pull the cv shaft out from the other side so now that i've got this supported i'm going to go ahead finish removing the bolt from the top side and then i'll come back down here and we'll work on getting the knuckle out at this point i have all the nuts off on the top i'm actually going to loosen the jack and get it out of the way but i'm going to support the strut and all the parts so at this point, as I said, the top's loose. Um, really got to kind of watch your wires, make sure that your tie rod end is out of the way. Um, you need to push down on the ball joint, on the lower control arm to separate the ball joint. I said, and then it's a matter of sometimes you may need to use a socket extension or something to help push the CV out. There we go. So at this point, I can bring the strut out and set it aside. Be careful with your CV shaft. You don't want to let it hang down too low. Um, you risk pulling it out. A lot of the times you can kind of rest it on the control arm or you can tie it up out of the way. I've got the old strut mounted in a vise. I'm not too worried about how I have it clamped since I'm replacing it. Uh, I do need to get the spring, the bump stop, and a dust cover off of this shock. Um, if you were reusing the top mount, which I wouldn't recommend, you should always replace that and the bearing underneath of it. Uh, to get this off, I'm going to do something that I normally wouldn't recommend anybody do. If, and I'm only doing this because this is a Golf R, if you've got an A3, if you've got a GTI, if you've got something that's got a little bit taller spring on it, this method does not work. If you've got any of the anything taller, you absolutely have to have a spring compressor on this spring up to relieve the load, otherwise it will shoot this top cap off. Fortunately, the Golf R and which should also mean the S3, this spring is short enough that I can remove this without a spring compressor. So I'm going to use a 21 millimeter socket. Uh, and it should power it right off. So that's the spring off safely. 
set. I would not normally recommend doing this without a, a spring compressor, uh, but it does work for the Golf R, and as I said, it should be the S3 spring, but if you've got a GTI, do not do it this way. You will need a spring compressor. So that's the top half, the bearing. I said I'm gonna be reusing the, uh, the dust boot, the spring, the bump stop, and you will also need this rubber uh, spring seat. Um, so that's everything I need off of the old one. I'm going to flip this thing around and we'll work on getting the knuckle off. Next up in removing the knuckle, uh, I've got to remove this pinch bolt. It is an 18 millimeter hex on top. It is a 12 millimeter, no sorry, M14 triple square on the bottom side. Now the fasteners out of the way, the next step is going to be, we've got to spread this knuckle because it is pinched on. Uh, they do make a specialty socket that can go in here and you can twist it and it'll open it up, but a lot of people don't have that, including myself. Uh, so what I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use a cold chisel uh, and be very careful. There is a metal tab in here that you're going to have to clear. So I'm going to actually drive from the bottom side and I'm just going to drive this in carefully and I should be able to start twisting. All right, so that's the knuckle off. So at this point, this whole shock is scrap. So I'm gonna work on getting the other one loaded up and we'll work on getting the new one assembled. So I've got, I've got the new shock or new strut mounted up in the vise. I changed up how I grabbed it. I'm grabbing it where the uh, sway bar link it is. I couldn't do that on the old one because of the stuck sway bar link. So at this point, the reassembly process is basically the reverse of the original. Um, I still have my wedge in here. As I said, if you had one of the sockets, it would be in here. There is a tab here that has to line up with the opening. So um, I've already done one of these and it is a challenge to get it started. So at this point, I'm dealing with some paint buildup on the edge. I'm going to sit here and use a soft face mallet and just give it some taps and start working it down. Said so this is not an easy task and it's very easy to get this kind of cocked. So work slow, pay attention. You do need to make sure that this tab down here is lined up with the slot and whatever you've got you you're using to spread make sure that it doesn't make contact with that as you work it down. So as I said, I'm gonna sit here um, and tap and work on this until I can get it on and then I'll be right back. After some trial and error and a fair amount of cussing, um, I was able to eventually get this knuckle all the way on. Uh, I said, you do have to spread it pretty wide. I don't know if these Bilsteins are, are larger than the factory ones or not, but it was it's a challenge getting it on. You're fully seated when there's a, there's actually a lip on the inside of the knuckle here. When that hits the bottom of the strut, you're all the way down. Um, this is a one-time use bolt, so you do need a new bolt and nut for this. Insert the nut from the DCC side and install the new nut. The torque spec for this is going to be 70 newton meters plus 180 degrees. You are not going to be able to get uh, the 180 degrees done while you have it in your bench vise. You're going to have to do that when you get it in the, in the car. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this to uh, 70 newton meters, uh, which I think is 52 foot pounds. And then I'm going to mark the fastener and wait till I get it in the car to actually finish complete to actually do the extra 180 degrees of tightening. To reassemble the new strut, first you're going to put the coil seat in. Uh, this sits down in here. There is a tab and a notch that lines up with a tab and a notch on this. So that's just kind of your spring seat that's going to sit down in there. Next up is the spring. Make sure that you put it in in the same orientation that you took it out. So make sure that the top stays the top. Next up is the bump stop. I'm reusing the original bump stop. Push that down, it'll get to its source eventually. Um, next up, I've got the uh, dust boot and a new bearing. Uh, 
this happens to be a new bearing from 034 Motorsport, but you could be using uh, a standard off-the-shelf factory bearing as well. So I pushed the dust boot up in there. Next up is the, the top for the camber mount for the 034 Motorsport mount. So if you look at the bottom side, there is a machine notch in here. There's a matching notch in the bearing. Those two pieces do line up. And when you go to assemble that same notch, so notch in the, in the bearing as well as notch in the top cap, those need to align with the tab that's on the bottom of the strut that you used for the pinch bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this down and in doing that you got to make sure that the I can install the washer on top and then the new nut that came with the Bilstein shock. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. push down on it a little bit just to get it the rest of the way down just to get the knot fully seated on there. As I said, the tab on the, the the notch in the bearing has to line up with the tang the tang on the shock itself. At this point uh, I'm ready to torque the new nut onto the onto the strut. In order to tighten this down there is a, at least on the Bilstein, there's a seven millimeter hex for an Allen key that you can use to hold. Uh, you're gonna need something like a set of vice grips to hold the Allen key because it's gonna take a fair amount of torque to, to counter hold. The nut itself is a 21 millimeter. You're gonna either need a pass through socket or in my case, I have a custom socket that I can use a crow foot wrench on. The torque spec is 60 Newton meters for this. So I'm gonna go ahead use my hold hold feature here and a torque wrench to go ahead and tighten this down to 60 newton meters. Once I get that tight, um, I'll be right back. While you're doing this, make sure that your top mount does not rotate off of that alignment. Got the shock assembly fully back together with the top nut to torque. Uh, the only thing left to do will be the pinch bolt once I get it installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to work this back into the wheel well. Um, one thing to note before you try and stir, reinstall your CV shaft, it's a good idea to put some uh, anti-seize or grease on the thread, on the spline. It'll just help both for insertion and in case you ever have to take it apart again. Just make sure not to get any down into the threaded portion. Uh, bringing this up in here, you have to be really careful. You've got uh, I've got all the wires and hoses over here. I've got the tie rod down there. Uh, and you obviously want to watch your paint and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start to bring this up into place. After a lot of struggling and cussing due to brand new bushings being in my lower control arm and it not wanting to move, uh, I finally have the strut physically in place. I don't have the top, any of the top bolts in. I don't have any bolts in at this point other than the three studs at the bottom and I do have the spline aligned here. I put the old bolt in just to make sure that everything stays together while I play around with this. At this point, I'm gonna put a jack underneath the lower control arm here to force this up so that I can get the three bolts into the top of the hat. With a jack supporting, I'm gonna use the three new bolts supplied by 034 Motorsports for their um, camber mount. Bear in mind, these are going into aluminum. These bolts are much shorter, so be very, very careful to make sure that you don't risk cross-threading these. Uh, as I said, you're also working in this kind of constrained environment because I don't have the plastic fully off. Got all three bolts snug. 034 Motorsports calls for a 30 Newton meter uh, torque here. That is different than what the factory spec is. So I'm going to go ahead and torque all these up to 30 per the spec. All right, I've gone ahead and torqued all these to the specified 30 Newton meters. One thing to note, the 034 Motorsport bolts are 12 millimeter. The factory bolts are 10, or sorry, 13. So make sure that you do change to a 12 millimeter socket. Uh, I've put the cowl back down, reinstalled the clip, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the weather stripping back on. At this point, I need to reinstall the wiper. With this, the biggest challenge is gonna be trying to get the wiper about back to where it was. It is a spline on here and there is no specific alignment feature. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm looking at basically where the wiper is in relation to the dirt mark on my windshield. Uh, it looks to be back into place. This is a 13 millimeter. Uh, this you just need to be snug. Um, it's not a very high torque fastener. Uh, make sure that you hold the arm as you do this so that you don't torque anything out of place. So at that point, all I gotta do is replace the cap on the wiper and I'm done on the top side. At this point, I'm going to install my new sway bar link. Uh, I just went and picked up a new one from the parts store. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead. The fasteners on this are a little different size. They aren't the same torque. They aren't the same uh, spec as before. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and work this in and get the bolts on the, or sorry, the nuts on. The torque spec for this is 65 Newton meters. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the sway bar link into place and then we'll come back. Next up, I've got the tie rod end that I'm gonna reconnect to the steering knuckle. Um, this is a 21 millimeter nut. It is supposed to be 20 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Uh, realistically, this is supposed to be a new nut. I did not buy some, so I may go back and get some new nuts later, but uh, this is gonna be 20 Newton meter plus 90 degrees. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and refit the rotor. Um, now is a good time to br brush any rust off that you've got. Um, make sure to line up the screw hole with the hole in the hub. This is the one place on the rotor where it's a good idea to use some uh, anti-seize only on this screw. You don't want to get any on the face of the rotor, but having a little bit underneath the head is just a good way to make sure that you don't get that bolt stuck in the future. So next up is going to be the carrier. Um, you can reuse these bolts, just you probably are going to want to wire wheel them. These or wire brush them. These do have a tendency to get a little sticky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, clean these bolts up, and align these on the back side. These are 200 newton meter, so you are going to need a pretty good size torque wrench for this. 21 millimeter head, 200 newton meter torque. I've got the bracket mounted back onto the onto the hub as well as reinstalled my, my brake pads. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and snake the rotor, or sorry, the caliper back over. Watch all your hoses and everything on the back side here. There's a bracket that we will have to reconnect in the future. Slide your caliper on and align it with the slides in the back. Um, Volkswagen does recommend replacing these bolts. Uh, they are not stretch bolts, but there is factory applied Loctite on them. If you are reusing the bolt, um, a little bit of blue Loctite, just a drop or two will be sufficient. Get these started. These are 35 Newton meters. It's a 14 millimeter head and the 17 millimeter uh, hold feature on the pin itself helps to have a nice thin wrench to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this torqued on and then we'll come right back. Now that I have the caliper torqued on, uh, the next step is just going to be reconnecting some of the electrical and some other parts. Uh, we've got this bracket here which is held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm going to go ahead and fasten that on. There's also your ABS sensor here that just needs to get clicked on. Make sure that clicks and holds. Um, We'll come back to uh, the DCC connection here in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this bracket mounted and we'll move on. Before I go any further, um, before I connect my level sensor here, we do need to finish torquing the pinch bolt. Uh, I torqued this to 70 Newton meters on the bench. It does require an extra 180 degrees of rotation. Uh, you do need to hold the nut and spin the bolt uh, 
Uh, this is a 14 millimeter triple square and it's an 18 millimeter hold on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get a breaker bar and a pipe to go ahead and spin this the extra 180. I've paint marked it so I'll know. Um, once again, do not use your torque wrench to do this extra angle. Next up, I'm going to reconnect the ride height sensor for my DCC shocks and my headlights. Uh, there is a stud that's going to come through on the bottom and then there is a locating tab that will go into the front hole right here. Um, 10 millimeter nut. Uh, don't know the torque spec on this. This is just one of those things that you just snug up. Just make sure that the alignment tab stays in place here uh, and just kind of be careful as you're, you're tightening this down that you're not putting any weird strains on your level sensor. Next up we're going to electrically connect the DCC shock to the original system. It does come with this adapter harness. Or it will connect into the DCC, sh into the Bilstein shock um, and lock in. One thing to note, this is the driver's side. On the passenger side, your cord will also face the passenger side of the car. Um, it will make connecting a little bit more challenging. Over here, um, you just have to connect the original factory connector to the Bilstein adapter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that connected and then we'll worry about, then we'll work on getting these uh, kind of tied up out of the way. I've gone ahead and made the connection from the adapter to the original DCC connector on the shock. Um, Bilstein gives you a little zip tie connector piece that goes onto a threaded stud. You can kind of see it right here kind of in the corner where my thumb just was. Uh, I tried using this and I just can't find a good way to actually secure uh, the connector on on either the driver's side or the passenger side. What I ended up doing on the driver's side, uh, I just ran two zip ties, one above the DCC body and one below, but over top of the stud to help hold things in place. Um, just be smart as you're doing this. Make sure that you're not um, pulling it on any wires, make sure it's good and secure and that nothing's gonna move over time. And you'll wanna double check these things every once in a while. Um, so passenger side, did something fairly similar, but as I said, you're gonna kinda have to figure out your own best way to mount these. Um, as I said, I ended up not using the supplied connector. I just used a couple of zip ties. One thing that's gonna be really important to double check uh, before you go tightening your ball joints or your axle nuts or anything like that, put your wheels on and double check your uh, wiring clearances. Uh, as you can see right here on my passenger side, the way I secured the wiring, uh, is making contact with the tire. The driver's side is fine, but obviously this is not gonna work. So I'm gonna pull this wheel off, fix how I have this mounted, but once again, just double check and make sure everything actually clears. Uh, you would not want to wear through any of your brand new wires. At this point, all the bolts that I can tighten are tight. Uh, the, all the electrical connections are made and everything's secured. I'm gonna reinstall my fender liner and I'm gonna do a brake bleed off camera. Uh, then after that, we've got still got a few bolts left to tighten. We still have to do the axle nut here, as well as the three ball joint nuts down here. Um, these are all, well, the ball joint nuts are supposed to be tightened with weight on the vehicle, or on the wheels. After reading and rereading the manual, I'm not entirely sure how they expect you to actually tighten these three nuts with the wheel on. I tried. With an 18 inch wheel, I can't get a socket in here to tighten these. So I am gonna tighten these without weight on the suspension. I don't know if that's really right or wrong, but it is 40 Newton meters plus 45 degrees on these. So that's my 40 Newton meters. I'm gonna go ahead and paint mark these and torque them the remaining 45 and then we'll work on uh, doing the axle nut here or axle bolt here in just a second. All right, earlier I mentioned that I was gonna plan on tightening and replacing the axle bolt here with weight on the vehicle, with weight on the wheels to help um, with the torque because this is a very high torque fastener. Uh, after reading through the manual, they specifically say do not put weight on this, on this wheel without this bolt tightened in place. So I'm gonna be actually tightening this in place uh, with the, with no weight on it, so you need to do this while the vehicle is still on jack stands or on the lift. 
Uh, if you're on a lift or something like this, um, the best way to keep the wheel from rotating, put your lug bolts in and snug them up. Take out your set screw because you will risk breaking it, uh, especially if that's the only thing in. And then you can take a small flathead or a reasonable sized flathead screwdriver, jam it into your rotor and it will come up against your brake carrier and it will hold. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug this up. Now that I've got the bolt snugged in, it is 200 newton meters, which is about 148 foot pounds. Uh, this is either a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 works. Be very careful, watch your vehicle on the stands, make sure everything's stable. And then you need to go another 180 degrees from this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this in the down position. Uh, do not use your torque wrench for this. You are gonna need a breaker bar and a pipe. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm sure that I'm gonna struggle with this a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, finish cranking this around to 180 out and then we'll come right back. I've gotten the bolt torqued the extra 180 degrees. Said it took a breaker bar, a lot of pipe, uh, and a lot of weight. So uh, it is extremely tight. As I said, do not use a torque wrench. Remove your screwdriver. At this point, I'm gonna go to the other side and then mount my wheels back up and we'll come back up to wrap things up. The vehicle is now back on the ground, wheels are on. At this point, the vehicle does absolutely need an alignment. You need to go get an alignment because you've completely disassembled the suspension, you've added camber. Uh, in my case, I've also added caster mounts to the, to the lower control arm, so everything is out of whack on the suspension. You need to get the car aligned as soon as possible. Uh, the other thing, if you do have uh, level sensors on your car, you are gonna need to recalibrate your level sensors. I'm gonna do that in another video because if you don't have level sensors, there's no reason for you to keep watching. So with that, that kind of wraps everything up. I said, this is a pretty involved process. It does require some special tools. There's a lot of really high torque fasteners. And as I said, there are other methods like the two by four method, um, but I think this way overall is probably easier. Um, with that, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe this channel. Uh, now that I've got all this work done, as soon as I get this alignment later this month, I'm taking this car back to the track. So we'll see how the, uh, the extra camber and the extra cast and everything helps. We'll see if it gives me a little bit better tire life and a little bit better handling on the track. Um, said, once again, thanks for tuning in uh, and we'll see you next time.